Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Educational Institutions, Policies and Practices. In order to effectively learn, teach and research, we must be able to access and build off of the work of others. It is therefore no surprise that teachers and students use, consult and share so many materials in educational institutions. While the Copyright Act has a very specific definition of what counts as an educational institution, the term covers both K-12 and post-secondary education. Some copying that takes place at educational institutions will be institutional copying, but some copying will be personal copying. Institutional copying would include copying done by professors for students in order to enrich their learning experience. And personal copying would include copying done by students themselves for their coursework or for personal study. With all that copying and distribution going on, it's no wonder that educational policy and practice is one of the most hotly contested areas of copyright. Major copyright lawsuits have arisen because of differing viewpoints around the fairness of copying done by staff and educational institutions. The 2012 Alberta Education, the Access Copyright case is an example. This case went to the Supreme Court and eventually determined that the teacher's copying of short excerpts of printed works and distributing those copies to their students was fair. Also in 2012, the Copyright Modernization Act came into force, which added education as a distinct purpose under fair dealing in the Copyright Act. Disagreements around the interpretation of the fair dealing exceptions in the Copyright Act are often at the heart of lawsuits like Alberta Education v. Access Copyright and Access Copyright v. York University, another court case this time involving a post-secondary institution. The main issues of this case revolved around whether tariffs approved by the Copyright Board are mandatory and whether the copyright fair dealing guidelines used by York University were fair. You may have noticed that both of these cases involved Access Copyright. Access Copyright is a copyright collective that manages the rights of literary works and licenses the photocopying of those works in educational institutions in exchange for fees. However, in Quebec, Copybeck is the responsible collective. And speaking of lawsuits, Copybeck brought a class action suit against Université Laval in 2017, which was settled in 2018. With so much controversy around educational copying and the high cost of litigation, it is natural for people who work in education to want to be cautious. However, we need to be careful that ongoing legal action on the part of collectives does not impede or discourage the legitimate uses of copyrighted material by students or educational institutions that's covered under fair dealing. Fair dealing is outlined in Section 29 of the Copyright Act and involves a two-step test for determining whether a particular use of a copyrighted material is fair. The first step is assessing the purpose of the use. The list of acceptable purposes includes education, as well as research and private study. However, just meeting one of the purposes in the first step doesn't mean that the use is fair. It depends on the outcome of the second step, the six-factor test. The second step involves assessing six key factors for determining whether the use of a work can be reasonably considered fair. There are many good resources that can help us understand if our use of a material falls under the fair dealing exception. These include other opening up copyright modules and resources from the Universities of Alberta, Ottawa and Toronto, as well as the CAUT's copyright guidelines. In addition to the fair dealing exception, the Copyright Act has outlined other exceptions to infringement for educational contexts. Section 29.4 to Section 30.03 describe the exceptions to infringement that apply specifically to educational institutions and staff. However, these exceptions are not relied on very often, in part because they are cumbersome, to say the least, and are thus not as relevant as the fair dealing exception, which is commonly relied on in different educational contexts. In the K-12 context, the Council of Ministers of Education Canada plays a leading role. The CMEC Copyright Consortium has developed and published fair dealing guidelines to help teachers and school administrators understand how to use copyright protected works appropriately. They have also developed other resources like a fair dealing decision tool that helps teachers to determine whether their copying can fall under fair dealing. Individual school boards may also adopt their own guidelines. Before 2011, post-secondary institutions would almost always have license agreements with Access Copyright or Copybeck to cover routine copying in their institutions. 
In recent years, this has given way to institutions employing a variety of different approaches to remain copyright compliant, in part by relying on the fair dealing exceptions. Like CMEC, many post-secondary institutions have developed their own fair dealing guidelines in order to provide a simple and straightforward approach to determine whether the fair dealing exception can be applied in particular circumstances. For both post-secondary and K-12 contexts, these fair dealing guidelines are not intended to be a replacement for the full analysis outlined by the Supreme Court of Canada. But, if followed, the guidelines are expected to yield a result consistent with such a full analysis in the vast majority of applicable cases. The future of copyright policies and practices in educational institutions is up in the air. The 2019 INDU Statutory Review of the Copyright Act acknowledged the ongoing tension between copyright collectives and educational institutions. It also recommended that the implementation of educational fair dealing continue to be reviewed. While copyright battles in the education sector may continue, it is also important to note that the rise of open content, such as open access scholarly publication and open educational resources like this, offer one way to resolve the tension. You should now be able to Recognize that educational institutions can rely on both fair dealing and educational exceptions outlined in the Copyright Act, and understand and be able to explain the role of fair dealing guidelines in an educational context. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Educational Institutions, Policies and Practices. Thank you for your attention.